we're now going to look at some examples in the context of equilibrium and we're going to use the Haber-Bosch process as the main chemical reaction that we're going to use to examine equilibrium. And so the Haber-Bosch process is this reaction where we're combining nitrogen and hydrogen to form ammonia. And what it has been credited with is essentially the continued explosive growth of the human population for the, during the 20th century. And so leading up to this point, where in about 1913 in Germany, when this was first industrially produced, and if I were to mark it on my little plot right here, which is a plot of the population of the Earth as a function of time, we had growth of the human population, and it continues going up exponentially. But during this time that we had, right around the turn of the, the 20th century, the nitrogen that was being used in fertilizer was being mined. And it wasn't necessarily clear where a continued renewed supply of this fixated nitrogen could be found to ensure the continued exponential growth of the human population. Not to mention that um, this fixated nitrogen was also used in munitions. And so that's why Germany was a country that was very concerned about creating a process because they had to mine it externally and because of embargoes during World War I, they needed to find a separate source. Hence, um, Professor Haber and Professor Bosch, who were both German physicists, they then industrially um, produced this process and won the Nobel Prize for it. But to put this into context of how important then the, the fertilizer aspect to this industrial process is, is that um, annually today we create about 450 million tons of fertilizer produced from this process and that the Haber-Bosch process consumes about 1 to 2 percent of the total annual world energy budget, which is an amazing amount of energy focused on just one very simple chemical reaction. But the output from this is that it has essentially quadrupled the productivity of all the agricultural land on Earth, which means that if we didn't have this process, we would have to use four times as much agricultural land to produce the equal or the food necessary to feed the 7 to 8 billion people that we currently have on Earth. Now what is truly neat about this process is that we can use these concepts in equilibrium and shifts in equilibrium to understand completely why the industrial process is set up the way it is. And so that's what we're going to start to do right now in this example and then as we move through the lecture. So the first step that we're going to accomplish is we're going to just simply find the change in Gibbs free energy of this reaction. Um, and we're going to find the standard change where basically we're going to do this at 298 Kelvin. And we're going to do this so that we can then determine the K for this process, the equilibrium constant, so that if we were to then just throw nitrogen and hydrogen into a reaction vessel and just let it go for enough time, that then we'd be able to predict what is the equilibrium concentration of the reactants and the products. And that's essentially what we're going to do in number three, is that we're going to have a bar of nitrogen and three bars of hydrogen. And then since now we know K, we can then find out the equilibrium concentration of all the reactants and products. So starting with the first problem, where we're just going to find out what the change in the standard Gibbs free energy of the reaction is, well that's just what we've discovered a couple of lectures ago, the change in the Gibbs, standard Gibbs free energy of the reaction is just the weighted sum of the products minus the weighted sum of the reactants. And I'm just going to be pulling these numbers from tables. And so for our products we have two times ammonia and the standard Gibbs free energy of ammonia is negative 16,450 joules per mole. And I put the 2 in front of it because I have a stoichiometric coefficient of 2 as a part of the balanced equation. And then for my reactants, I have nitrogen and hydrogen in their standard states. And so then I'm going to have 0 plus 0 because the Gibbs free energy of formation of standard states is equal to 0. And so what that means is that my changing the standard Gibbs free energy for the reaction is minus 32,900 joules per mole. Let's now find K. We just saw a second ago that this change in Gibbs free energy or the standard change in Gibbs free energy of the reaction, well that's also equal to negative RT times the natural logarithm of K. And So in this case now we're going to take this number that we just calculated a second ago and then solve for K. So minus 32,900 that's equal to minus 8.3145, so that's the gas constant R, times the temperature, we're at 298 Kelvin, times the natural logarithm of K. 
And just as a side note, the reason why I chose to express my Gibbs free energy in joules per mole instead of kilojoules per mole is that my R value is also expressed in joules. And so I wanted to make sure that both of these values had the same order of magnitude for this unit of energy. And that's why I made that choice there. But if I rearrange so that I divide both sides by R and T in the negative sign, then the left-hand side I'm going to get 13.3 is equal to the natural logarithm of K, which means then my K is equal to 5.84 times 10 to the 5. So taking a brief step back and thinking about what this number means, this K value, this equilibrium constant value, well, we also just saw that the equilibrium constant can be expressed as the activities. And so I have the activity of... Um, ammonia raised to the power of 2, and I have that divided by the activity of nitrogen, and then I have the activity of hydrogen raised to the power of 3. And because I have this number that is very, very, very big, this 5.84 times 10 to the 5, what that means is that in this case the numerator is then going to be some big number, and that's going to be divided by a relatively smaller number. And so this says then that if I'm going to put a bunch of reactants in a vessel that then over time these are going to tend to form ammonia all on its own simply because this is what the equilibrium constant is telling us and that the direction of spontaneity, the direction of the Gibbs free energy tells us that it's going to move towards products which is great for this process because that's what we want. We want to take nitrogen and hydrogen and form ammonia so we can use it in a relevant um, application like fertilizer production.